Hey everyone, another session of afternoon tea with Helen. And as always, I have my tea here in my English teacup because obviously I like to drink tea. And today, today I've got mint tea. A um, little bit of stomach issues. So, so mint is really good for your stomach and it's good for helping you with your digestion and everything else. So I'm going to be drinking my mint tea throughout. And I'm welcoming everyone who uh, tunes in to what we're doing here at Afternoon Tea. Remember to subscribe and remember to comment and remember to like as well. So today we have two beautiful ladies with us today. Um, and one of them is called Lana and one of them is called Nikki. So Lana and Nikki, Lana, if you could go first. What are you doing? What is your thing for going on? Introduce yourself, tell me who you are, what you're doing, all that sort of stuff. Okay, Helen, um, thanks for having us here today. My name is Lana Spitaleri. I'm the broker right. of Costa Bella Realty Group, located right, located right here in downtown Hollywood in the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. And we are actually in the office today, finally. And um, getting things back together. Uh, it's been a frightening experience, but we have stayed working remotely. Um, well, yeah. So frightening because we're going through the, the COVID 2020 at the moment. So if someone's listening to this in 2022, you'll know that COVID-19 was around in 2020. So you're back in the office and you're back doing um, real estate, yes? real estate, yes, and growing the business. So how, how, good. So how did you get into real estate? How long have you been doing it? I've been in real estate for 20 years, 20 plus years. Um, it was, I waited, you know, for my children to graduate. And um, then I went into business of my, you know, I was with um, Remax for uh, many, many years. And then I decided to open up my own business. And, the, you know, the office opened up into the Chamber of Commerce and I decided to just go on my own. And now I'm here four years. What, what made you decide to become a realtor? Because for people that know in Florida, um, every second person is a, is a real, real estate person. So what made you decide to get into real estate? Were you in Florida or were you somewhere else? No, I was in Florida and I just had a passion. I was always interested. I was formerly a, a mortgage broker and um, wanted to get into the real estate side also. Excellent, excellent. So what, what do you find um, motivating about being in real estate as a woman in real estate? What are some of the things that are really good about being a realtor? Well, um, just being with people, making them happy, finding them the perfect home for their families, uh, there's there's lots of um, good things to it. What would you um, what would you say is some of the uh, downsides of uh, real estate for women, and how do you overcome those challenges? I think Nikki can speak better for <laughs> than the. the... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Nikki. So Nikki, tell us a bit about you. You're Nikki and what's your last name? My last name is Hannah. Um, I'm actually born and raised okay. in Hollywood. Um, I've known Lana, I think since the age that I was six. And this is Hollywood, Florida. This is Hollywood, Florida, not Hollywood, California. Correct. Um, I think I met Lana when I was six years old. Um, I went to Nativity and Chaminade Madonna High School. Long time ago, I was part of the Chamber of Commerce in Hollywood. I was on the education board. I had opened the first charter school on the Young Circle area in 2003. So I've seen, you know, the charter schools blossom. And um, this was a perfect fit because Lana, Lana is ready now, after being in her own brokerage for four years, to take it to the next level. So to go back to the question that you asked, what possibly might hinder women or might be some obstacles, I think um, everyone has their own goal setting. You're a life coach. So you look at, you, know, you have your extroverts and you have your introverts. You have people that can walk into a room and make conversation with people um, of any kind. And you can have some people who will be in the corner. So any type of sales, whether it's real estate, 
or selling your services or retail, you have to have a passion for what you do. What would hinder a woman in this field is maybe someone who hasn't maybe came from a corporate setting or a job and they're coming out from being a homemaker and they haven't been used to some of the technology that's out there, the negotiation tactics, um, some of the, the mortgage issues that are, you know, that currently go on with first time home buying um, and how much money needs to be down. But I think it's about adapting and overcoming. And if you have your mindset on, you know, being in any profession, you're able to, um, you know, break through all those obstacles. So um, there's plenty of training out there. So, Go ahead. I was just going to say, what about the, um, the, well, there's a couple of questions I want to ask, but the, the training side of it. So it, someone getting into to real estate, do they have to know about mortgages? Do they have to know about title? Do they have to know about land? Do they have to know about property management? Do they have to know all of those things? Not exactly all of them, but it's good to have knowledge of what you're doing and, you know, for, as for zoning and, you know, schools and, you know, things like that, your neighborhoods, you need to know your farm areas. Um, yeah, you need the knowledge. Yeah. Well, typically almost everybody uh, has, where, where? everyone, everyone yeah. has to live, whether you rent or you buy something. So at some point in your life, you've had some type of transaction, whether you had to go rent an apartment or rent a house or buy a house. So sometime around your life, you've had to walk through that process. So at this point, if you want to become a realtor, it's remembering the process that you did and then just, you know, taking it to the next level to know more of the details. Nowadays with technology. Um, that's, that's a good way. To, yeah, that's a good way to explain it because everybody's gone through yeah. either renting or buying at some point. So that's a good way to explain it. But tell me, when you do an open house, I know that there's a lot of virtual stuff right now, but um, normally when you do an open house, tell me some funny stories about open houses. Nosy neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, nowadays, they, they come into the open house? Yeah. <laughs> nowadays, um, because we have technology and we're able to make videos, even before the coronavirus, you were able to make videos, walkthroughs, right. um, do PowerPoint slides and things like that. People can see the property before they even want to even show it maybe to their client and then their client can see it. You know, I really don't like that style, what have you. So it kind of saves the time of having to go to an open house. Also in an open house, it can be a little bit impersonal because a lot of people that are in there, you really don't want to like discuss the nitty gritties or start negotiating when there's other people around. But um, that world's right. kind of changed. Um, open houses, like they're like brokers opens that they do open houses for like your multi-million dollar luxury kind of homes because that's a particular buyer. So you're mostly entertaining other realtors because those realtors have those type of buyers. So they go and they preview the, the property ahead of time. And then this way they can go back and find a buyer that can, you know, really wants that type of home. So condos, townhouses, really no one's really doing as many open houses um, because that's just not really like, you're not gonna have walk through traffic through a condo association and what have you. Now with the lock boxes and all that, you can make appointments online. So people, you can easily show and have that one-on-one -on -one experience. Yeah, which, is, which is, makes it easier for you. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it easier for you because you've got appointments and you've got, you can time manage and your calendar and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, Lana, you're, um, you're uh, Costa Bella, right? Okay. So how many people have you got working in your, your office with you? Right now we have 19 and we have more on their way. A lot of them work, you know. So you have 19. 19 agents. So you have 19 realtors. Yes. Okay, so, so, so explain to people that don't know anything about real estate, okay, you go out and you take your real estate license and now you want to go and start selling, you know, and making money. So what is the purpose, or do they, can they do that by themselves? No. They've got a license that can go off and do something, or do they have to join a uh, group of some description? Yes, you have to be under a broker, which I am the broker. Okay. And uh, you need training. 
you need a, you know, they just can't come right out. You know, the, when they first come out, you, you sell to your friends and your family. But after that, you might right. have a lull and you, unless you know how to generate business. Right. And that's where like a chamber uh -huh. of commerce comes into handy is to use those networking. You know, for a long time, chamber of commerce fell off the map because a lot of your millennials, people under 40 weren't utilizing the chamber of commerce world because they were so used to social media and other types of networking things that they were using at college and stuff like that. You're seeing um, it come back around, especially now um, with the coronavirus, they've been very proactive in the community, trying to help small businesses, working with their local governments, working with their state officials um, to help keep the small businesses going. Because without those small businesses, we don't have those tax dollars coming in. And you want people to live right. in certain areas because there's places to eat, there's places to shop, there's growth and opportunity, mm -hmm. jobs. So um, I think you're going to see a change with the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, Hollywood is a phenomenal one. It always has been um, a great, you know, chamber, um, has great leadership. It has a great board of directors. I think now you're going to see more people getting involved because they're going to have to go back to that networking and this, you know, really what makes them different than someone else or buying online and getting back to that one-on-one -on -one. because people buy you, people buy your reputation. They buy, um, you know, how you feel. Um, buying a home is a very emotional purchase. Um, and selling your home uh -huh. is an emotional purchase, especially if someone had passed away and you had to sell a house or you got divorced or, you know, now you're an empty nester and you and your husband have to move now into a condo because you don't need this 4,000 square foot house. So there's a lot of things that a realtor is to um, emotional. work with. Emotion. Yeah. It's very emotional. Yep. So, uh -huh. Yeah. So Nikki, tell me, how did you get from uh, being on school boards and involved in all the schools into real estate? How did you make that bridge? Okay. So the reason why I was in the school board um, was at the time I was getting my master's. So I needed something that was working for me. There wasn't really online schooling at that time. Uh, I come from a family of educators. Um, all the females were teachers. And I taught business. So I've always been a business minded person, but everyone needs to know business, whether you use it or not, because life is a business. Um, whether you're a realtor or whether you're a bank teller, a life coach, everything is a business. A school is a business. There's a budget, there has to be marketing, there has to be fundraising, there has to be an HR department. So um, I taught business. Um, it wasn't like my end all goal to be an educator, but I took it as a stepping stone to actually learn more public speaking, you know, dealing with confrontation with parents, because <laughs> that's always fun because our kids uh, do anything wrong. Yeah, that's always fun, yeah. Yeah, and then I actually went into the health I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure now with all, I was gonna say, I'm sure now with all the homeschooling going on, they now realize how the teacher was right. Correct, right. And, and I hope they're realizing it. And I hope they can understand some of the glitches that are in the school system that they need to actually help and be more proactive in communication and reading your right. documents, understanding, you know, all these different databases that the kids are using, because that would only help them as well, even in their professional life, these parents, to know how to use some of these technology um, setups. So, Absolutely. So how did, you, how did you transition into real estate from there? So actually, I in 2000, um, I started doing real estate. I tapped into it. Um, I was, my, my first husband was a general contractor. So we did a lot of buying and flipping of homes. And then the market crashed. And I just, I kind of got out of it. He was still doing stuff, but we weren't doing so much the buying and flipping. He, we did, he did commercial build outs and stuff like that. And then I went into um, the health and wellness industry, which is another billion dollar industry in South Florida. And that actually kind of brought me where I am today because of the book of business, because the amount of people that I met, um, I had a boutique style of gym where you had to have a certain kind of income to afford. It wasn't like a UFIT where it's $20 a month. People were spending between 500, you know, to a thousand dollars. And I was in an area where um, homes range between a half a million to $2 million. So I became friends with them, like almost like family. They would invite me to their bar mitzvahs, to their weddings, to their kids' parties. And from there, you build a book of business. Um, I took on a leadership role with the Davy Cooper City Chamber of Commerce as the CEO. And I was there for um, 
almost three years and I revamped it. Um, they needed a whole new facelift, you know, bring in somebody younger who had the energy and it takes a lot of energy to run a chamber of commerce for mm -hmm. a job. Oh um, yeah. Met some phenomenal realtors. Um, you know, they kind of saying, get back in the business, do the business, blah, blah, blah. And at this point um, in my life, my fiance is retiring from the fire department after 33 years and I just got back into it. So wow. I understand it. I have investment property, so does my fiance. So we understand having multiple ways of having income um, and understanding how to make money with other properties, how you can take equity from another property you have to buy, purchase another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> use these low interest rates right now um, to work for you. People have to capitalize on what this pandemic actually opens up opportunities. There's been small business loans that were never Absolutely. available before. Mm -hmm. um, unemployment, um, right. as far as going from 275, um, you know, up to $800 a week um, has never been seen before. 1099s, self-employed people were able to get unemployment, uh -huh. which was never seen before. So when we can all say the pandemic has caused some issues, but also it's a lot of opportunity. And this is when an entrepreneur or skill sets would have to come uh -huh. in to say, wow, let me capitalize on this. So, um, yes. And, and I've, I've seen a lot of, yeah, I've seen a lot of that over the last three or four weeks with some of my clients and some of my uh, people that I network with have actually set up all these different businesses from what has been going on because people have got uh, time to think about the things that they wanted to do and they've got the opportunity as well like you said so well bring oh, you start. yeah yeah well we you know we've done zoom meetings we have um, multiple emails everybody has stayed working but very remotely and um, we just try to motivate each other and bringing Nikki on is a big motivational um, piece because she never sleeps. <laughs> She's constantly thinking what we should do, how we, sh how we can grow. Uh, you know, she's very um, motivating. So people always ask- So Nikki- Factor is, I think- So, so Go ahead. No, go ahead. What's your motivator? Yes. I think um, when we always talk about like athletics for kids, um, I was never an athlete. However, I was always into fitness when I was younger. So I think when things happen on the field, um, as a younger um, child that's developing and, you know, ha you know, being goal setting, it progresses into adulthood. So um, I think this has been a eye opener for some parents who are all for, you know, having a formal education for which I have. I mean, since I was probably five years old, I was in the car going FSU, FSU, and I didn't go to FSU. I went to Nova, but my parents always had in my mindset, you're going to go to, um, you know, higher level education in for which I did. I have a four year degree and I have um, two masters as well as other numerous of certifications and situation of leadership and all that. That's all great, but there's no jobs right now. Okay. So I could be the right. top of everything. Um, there's people, even in your chamber of commerces, they've had to lay off people, downsize. You see in the hospitals, you see everywhere. So having a trade um, or another skill set is what I think some of these parents need to be pushing as they're um, worrying about having a graduation, yes. which I understand milestones and taking a picture and all these things, but um, I never walked for any of my college graduations because I wasn't really worried about the big fluff. I was so eager to get out and make money. Um, and I needed that degree at that time to open up doors. Nowadays, no one cares really about an MBA. Everybody has one. So getting your real estate license, getting your mortgage broker, your mortgage broker license, getting your insurance license, plumber, AC, those are trades that are always going to be used. Um, and real estate has un, um, potential, unlimited potential um, income as long as you're motivated. That means it's a 40 to 60 hour uh -huh. job. Um, and then I think what really makes you motivated is once you have your closed sales, you, once you start getting your referrals, you're more pumped um, to do other stuff. And there is so much help between what the, Nash, what the local boards do for realtors at the national level for training and development that there's no reason why someone can right. say you're not successful in it. But you have to be a people person. 
Um, and you have to want to sit here and make those phone calls, do your mailers, um, go to the networking events. And then also one thing me and Lana always talk about is it's a teamwork. Okay. I'm not competing against her and she's not yeah. competing against me. And that seems to be a lot that you see um, in sales in general. And I think that if we all put our talents together, I mean, she has years of experience. I mean, as a broker, that's a, that's a different license that you have to have as well as being a mortgage broker, which um, I've learned from her and she's learned from me. You know, um, there's like a 20 year age difference and we've both been able to bounce off different things um, from each other. And the cool thing is from grassroots, from being in Hollywood, we can say just the one person's name and we all know who we're talking about. Right. Right. <laughs> Cause you know, I, right. Exactly. Right. exactly. Local, yeah. Local knowledge is, key. yeah. Local knowledge is key. Um, so just to finish up. So if you were to give, um, someone, uh, that's, you, you talked a lot about education and schooling and all that sort of thing. If you were to give someone who's coming into the workforce, apart from the fact to have, multiple ways of being able to adjust to the environment what what's something you would have wished you'd know that someone had told you so we'll, we'll talk from two different generations um because um mm -hmm. the generation most people got married you know kind of like right out of high school or maybe they only did like an associates or what have you whereas my generation um i'm 40 um, we went kind of pretty much into, you know, to school, especially coming from parochial school, there was like no answer or what have you, like you weren't doing anything. Uh -huh. else. Um, I think to get a certification, I mean, what, what I, I mean, I did because my father always, he sat me down when I left, um, for college and said, okay, you can get a degree, but when you come back or while you're in school, I want you to get a certification. So I did a couple of them and I kind of still, did my own thing, which was fitness. And when I told my dad I wanted to open a gym, he like almost like fell over. But then when he saw <laughs> eventually, cause he couldn't understand the, the amount of money that it would make. Um, right. of course. It's just yeah. like it, again, it's branding, it's opportunity, it's things like that. Um, but nowadays, as much as I believe in people getting their four year degree, which I still think that people should do. Cause I think there's also um, a different type of level there where, where people learn how to write better, uh, negotiate better. There's things you can learn in a classroom from a teacher that you might necessarily always learn on your own. But to get a certification right now, um, Career Source Broward um, is offering a ton of grants. Uh, McFadder, all these schools, because of this pandemic, allowing you to get some free education. The parents should really capitalize mm -hmm. on. It. If your kid was planning on going away to school and you lost your job, and even though they might not gotten Florida Bright Futures you might not be able to afford the housing right now. So you may have to tell your, your kid, look, you know what, you might have to go to Broward College the first two years now or stay here because of what has happened. But don't look at it as a setback, okay? Nothing's a setback, it's another opportunity. Because in South Florida, you have a better chance of being picked up to get like a, a job in real estate, mortgage or insurance than uh, you know being in Tallahassee, which is more politically driven. Um, you don't have as much opportunity where people are buying as much real estate as you do down here. So it's taking a negative and turning into a positive. And I strongly agree. I, I've posted this on Facebook a million times when all these parents are, you know, upset because their kid couldn't have a high school graduation and stuff like that. They're still graduating. They're still, no one's taking away their education and no one can ever take away your education. Exactly. The yeah. experience of walking across yeah. the, you know, the stage. Okay. That's, I understand that, but this time next year, they're going to forget about that. They're going to be onto something else, whether it's sorority or right. you know, another milestone in their life. I mean, it's just like divorce. I didn't plan on getting divorced, you know? So, I mean, you just, there's things that you have to adapt. None to. of us plan on that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Lana, what would be one thing, okay, in 30 seconds, what would be one thing that you would uh, wish that you'd known? when you were younger? I wish that I would have been pushed more to, to learn because now I learn every day I learn something, you know, and I, and I cherish it because you really need that. But when I was growing up, you, you were thinking about getting married, you know, you, you really weren't, it, it really wasn't the education. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I think yeah. It's learning. And, and I, 
And one thing to comment yeah. from, and I from think Claire, just because I mean, Lana raised her kids. She has three great kids, and then you know, unfortunately, she got divorced herself. And what she did, she had to start thinking how I'm going to make a living for myself. So if she can be a role model to other people because of life changes, anyone yeah. can do it. So she's a mm -hmm. good model. Someone, you know, anybody in this area, um, in our in our chamber, um, or in the area that want to come and talk to her, like how did you do it? And I mean, she has a you know great story, and she's open and she'll share it with you. And her son got his license. Uh -huh. Fast forward, you know, I guess almost like 17, 16 years later. Now yeah. she's at 20 years, but she was able yeah. to open up her own brokerage because of her hard work and dedication. So uh -huh. she is an entrepreneur, uh -huh. entrepreneur spirit, and she allows you to run with your ideas. And, and, and learning stuff and education are two different things, you know, so learning things and being, um, more educated in life skills is what I find that people are lacking. You know, they can have lots of um, MBAs and all this sort of stuff, but a, a lot of people don't have the life skills that match it. You know, so I, I think like Lana, you said, yeah. learn, learning all the time and being involved in, and, and taking that extra mentorship and all that sort of thing from from people that have gone through things and yeah. don't reinvent the wheel, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, which I think is amazing. So listen, ladies, thank you so much. You've been very interesting. And anyone that wants to become anything to do with real estate, these two ladies seem to know all about it. So uh, their information will be below. Uh, they will put in the comment below their, their uh, website, their emails, all that sort of thing. So you can get in contact with them. And, Another afternoon tea with Helen, of course. So subscribe, make sure you like, make sure you comment. And thank you so much for listening again and being here at another afternoon tea with Helen. Thank you.